Excellent! So just about every week, I do a bunch of work out here in the garage, projects, and I kind of wrap things up, usually about Friday. Sometimes I'm working by myself, sometimes I have Joe, my editor here, working here with me. And then I sort of say the same thing. I'm gonna get this stuff cleaned up over the weekend, and then on Monday, we can start fresh. But um, it doesn't always work out that way. It's way more common for it to end up looking like this. What happened this last week was this was my work area over here, and so this became the discard area, everything that I needed to just get out of the way, I was setting there. So I was supposed to clean all this up over the weekend, but uh, with a baby coming soon, I didn't have any time to do that. So today, I'm trying to keep the to-do list relatively short and simple, although it's gonna take some time. So first off, I'm just gonna clean. I have some time here by myself this morning because I sent Joe to Micro Center to pick up a few key components for the second part, which is going to be building a couple systems, again, in the Dr. Zaber Sentry 2.0 case. The case is actually available now in Indiegogo, so I'll put a link to that down in the video's description. I'm not building it again because I haven't given it enough coverage. I've already done two separate videos on it, but they sent me two of the cases. I have a 1 million subscriber giveaway coming up very soon, as soon as my plaque actually arrives, and I wanted to do a personally built system as part of that giveaway too. So that's what I'm gonna be building that system for. Let's get started. Well, I can't say everything's perfectly clean, but this is way, way, way better than it was before. So it's always nice to spend a bit of time tidying things up. And I've been gathering parts over here for the Dr. Zaber build. And I think, perfect timing, who's just arrived? Walking into frame perfectly. Like you asked. Come on, Joe. All right. <laughs> So Joe's here, thank you Joe. Uh, he grabbed this processor, which is the 9600K, uh, which is overclockable, so it's gonna go good with the motherboard. And uh, I, did you get a power supply? They didn't have it. They didn't? All right, that's fine. So it's okay that we still have an SF600 power supply for the giveaway build, so we can get that all put together. And part of the reason I'm doing this, for a giveaway, I'm gonna be shipping it. So smaller the better, that's always nice. And then Dr. Zaber originally sent me two of these cases. They have it in the classic black, and then they have this gray finish, looks kind of like an aircraft carrier or a fighter jet or something like that. And I have done a poll to see which of these two cases, which finish the fans want the opportunity to potentially win for a giveaway. Let's check the results. The poll still has a ways to go, but it looks like black is definitely the favorite with 64% of the votes so far with about uh, close to 800 people weighing in. So I think we're gonna go with the classic black here for the giveaway. And then I will be setting up a portable system for myself to use in situations in the future when I need to take it on the road and such in the gray system. So that means I have two builds to assemble now. One is gonna be a giveaway, and uh, guys, I know I've already done a build in the Zaber two, Century 2.0, so apologies for doing another one, but hopefully you'll forgive me since one of them is gonna be a giveaway, uh, and then mine I'll be able to get together most of the way, but not quite completely until I get that power supply. I think we're just about ready to go now, rebuilding, continuing to build, building new, uh, but yeah, I guess it's kind of turning into a more standard build video at this point. That wasn't really my intent, but that's okay because that's really what my channel is about most of the time time, so I'm sure you guys hopefully don't mind too much. Let me quickly go over the parts one more time, starting with the giveaway system. The case, of course, the Dr. Zaber Sentry 2.0 in black for graphics card. The winner will get the GeForce RTX 2070, and this is that gigabyte mini version, 170 millimeter. So yes, I'm going with the small graphics card for this build, as well as the liquid cooler for the CPU. The H60 from Corsair, paired up with this NF-A12 X15 PWM fan from Noctua, and I will be flipping the fan this time around because apparently when I originally did the build in this, I had the fan not in the optimal position. It's not a huge difference, but it should give a little bit better thermal performance with it uh, flipped, so that's nice. Sticking with Intel for this build, so the RG Strix Z390-i Gaming from Asus will be the motherboard. There it is right there. It actually still has the 8700K in it, but I will be removing that and dropping in the 9600K. Reason for that being that the 9600K is an unlocked overclockable six core processor, which is very good for gaming and that 8700k says intel confidential on it which means it's an engineering sample which is the one that they provided me and you're not really supposed to like give those away or anything like that you're supposed to hang on to them if those are provided to you by intel so i'm sticking to that for memory we're going to continue to use the kingston hyperx predator kit right here ddr4 3200 speed for an ssd we're going with the intel 660p and this is the one terabyte version of that and then the power supply this little corsair sf600 uh, sfx power supply which 
which is 80 plus platinum rated and also comes with, with nicely sleeved cables. I don't know if you guys noticed that in the last video, but it's good cabling on this power supply. The secondary build over here is going to be an AMD system and that's gonna be based around this Oris B450i Pro Wi-Fi motherboard, which has AM4 socket, has Wi-Fi included, also has M.2, so it's gonna be a great sort of core for this build. And I'm going to be adding a Ryzen 7 processor to it. This is the 2700X. My idea for this system is that it might be multi-use. If I take it on the road, I'm probably not just gonna be gaming with it, but also doing video editing. So more cores and threads uh, is always good to have. Now it might be slightly hard to keep that cool in a case this small. If you guys watched my original video, my testing video, things can get warm in here. I am still gonna be using the CryoRig C7 low profile cooler. Unfortunately, I have the AM4 upgrade kit for that. This was actually sent by a fan uh, a while back. So thank you to the fan who sent this in. It's actually coming in handy at this point. Obviously this isn't gonna be the best cooling, but I think given the case size and everything, it will get the job done. And you know, it might down clock slightly when I'm doing rendering or something like that, but I have no problem with that. I'd rather, rather have the extra cores and threads. For a memory kit, we have a G-Skill Sniper X kit. This is 3400 speed memory, which is Ryzen compatible. So faster memory is always good to have on this platform. And I still don't have an SSD graphics card or power supply for this build yet, but since it's gonna be kind of a work in progress anyway, um, I can add those at a later date. At the least, I will get the system initially put together. And of course I will be finishing off the giveaway build. So let's get started and put these rigs together. <laughs> Working on the second build now, the AMD system, and uh, this is sort of a unique conflict that I'm encountering here. You guys probably won't see it, but uh, I'm using this upgrade kit for uh, the Type-C upgrade kit for the CryoRig uh, C7, which is our little low profile cooler right here. The main difference here is that these little brackets that attach to the bottom, they've supplied different ones that have AM4 mounting holes. And then they also provide this separate back bracket. It's plastic, um, but this is the original. This is the AM4 one. And you notice how kind of wide this bracket is, and that's because it's got that sort of X shape on the back with the wider mounting locations, and that's for Intel sockets. And then this sort of rectangular part in the middle is for AMD sockets. But when I position this on the back of this motherboard, we've got some surface mount components out here and then up here that are conflicting with it. So I could just mount it that way anyway, drill through, tighten it down, but it would be tightening the back plate up against these components, and that's just not a good idea. But since I still have this backup back plate, which will work Work for Intel sockets if this cooler ever needs to get reused in the future. Uh, I'm just gonna cut pieces off of the ends of this to make room for those components and only really concern myself with the AMD mounting part of this one. So guys, the title of this video is This Happens Way Too Often, and you know, some things do happen pretty frequently here. It gets messy, I gotta clean it up. Computer parts come in, I gotta build computers out of them. What doesn't happen very often is me hitting one million subscribers. And yes, I know I've been mentioning that multiple times over the past three or four weeks since it actually happened, but I'm just trying to delay long enough so that when I actually do the million subscriber thank you giveaway, which is coming very soon, uh, you guys won't have forgotten that that actually happened in the past. So that is coming soon, as soon as my goal to play button arrives here from YouTube. And yes, this system here, the one on the right with the 9600K and an RTX 2070 will be one of the prizes up for grabs international. It'll be great. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out and we'll see you guys in the next one.